Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 7-5 where all your base R belong to us. We are moving on to mega powerful things with logarithms. There's a reason that mathematicians invented this stuff. It's because it's amazing. It can do it all and we're going to do it all, you and me. We said last time that there are some logs that are not have any number written in them. You cannot see the base. And there is a uh, most common one of just L-O-G means assume base 10 versus L-N, uh, thanks to the uh, French, means uh, log natural, the log base E, because E is the natural number. What is E? Now, a full answer is going to have to take calculus. Um, e is not a number that you can do any algebra equation and arrive at. That if you say 1 plus 1 over n to the n, if you put in 1, you get 1. If you put in 2, you get um, 2.25. If you put in 3, it keeps going up, but it goes up slower and slower every time. So eventually, as you go higher and higher and higher and higher with n in this equation, you get something that zooms in on this number 2.718, dot, dot, dot. So that's E. That's the definition we're going to go with now. Um, it's not really going to be clear to you until we start being able to talk about calculus. That's going to have to wait. So uh, for now, what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to deal with any base. We need to be able to deal with something that could come with anything down below. And so here, for example, is x is equal to log base 5 of 17. There is no uh, base 5 button on your calculator. Now some of the TIs have an ability for you to put a new base in there, but I want to show you the old school way because that is more than the principle behind it and lets you deal with complex log equations and simplify them. So you remember we said draw the circle that you can go from 5 to the x to the 17 and you can see that another way to write uh, x equals log base 5 of 17 is 5 to the x equals 17. Okay, that didn't do much. We just moved the pieces around. But now if we take the log of both sides, we start to see the usefulness of these log properties that we learned in the last section. If you look at that first expression, I've got an exponent on my log, which I can then pull out front. That fi log 5 to the x is the same as x log 5. Now I've almost got x alone, I just need to divide both sides by log 5, and you've got x by itself. You have solved for x in a way that you can immediately put into your calculator, even a dumb calculator that's not too fancy. So watch what, look what happened there. We started off, look at this equation, originally we said that x was log base 5 of 17, and now we've got a log base 10 of both. And obviously, I could have done this with ln just as well. It doesn't matter. We've picked a new base, and everything still is calculatable. So this is what is called the change of base formula. But I just showed you how you can make it without having to memorize this. You can say, I've got log base b of a, and I just want to pick some new number. I want to pick 10. I want to pick e. I want to pick whatever I want. And as long as I do that consistently, both in uh, top and bottom, I can transfer form log base b of a into log base c of a over log base c of b. And the way you can remember that is that the base went to the basement. What was log base b now has a log of b in the denominator, in the basement. So that's a way to be able to remember that. All right, so how are we going to approach this problem? Your gut should tell you that the first part is totally not solvable. That if I say, what power do I put on 5 to get 8, that's going to be some horrible decimal because powers of 5 all end in 5. So no matter what nice number I pick there, this ain't it. And powers of 2 are all even, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And I'm not going to get 125 from some power of 2. So this is going to be a horrible decimal times a horrible decimal. What possible meaningful thing can I say about this? Well, watch. If we, if we rewrite, we, so let, let me write what we have. We have log base 5 of 8 times log base 2 of 125. 
That's nothing. That's nothing cool. So let's change a base formula. Log base 10 of 8 over log base 10 of 5 times log base 10 of 125 over log base 10 of 2. So that's just me. Now I've got it in a form that I could put it in the calculator. But if I do a little switchy-roo dance here of the denominators, if I rewrite this as log of 8 over log of 2 times log 125 over log 5, now you can see I've got some numbers that kind of go together. This 2 and this 8, they kind of hang out. And this uh, 5 and 125, they belong together. They're in the same family of exponents. So look back at the change of base formula and recognize that it goes both ways. Not only do you have the ability to take a log and turn it into a fraction, but you have a fraction, as long as it has the same base in both logs, that you can turn into one log. Okay, so that means, what can I do with this first fraction? I can turn it into log base 2 of 8, and I can turn this one into log base 5 of 125. And now we have English sentence questions that you can answer. What power do I put on 2 to get 8? Answer 3. What power do I put on 5 to get 125? Answer is uh, 3, right? 120, yes, and therefore, altogether, answer is 9. So the change of base formula, if you really know it, then you can even use it backwards. It's an equation. It's reversible in directions. Last example here is, or second to last example, is we have a case where we need to do some substitution. We've got a horrible problem that is quite unsolvable as is. We've got 2 to the... 2 times e to the 2x plus 5 e to the x minus 3 equals 0. That's not something that I'm going to be able to solve just looking at it here. So I'm going to wish away the part that I don't like. I'm going to let u equal e to the x. And now I'm saying 2u squared plus 5u minus 3 equals 0. So you could do guess and check. You could split the middle. I happen to be able to see offhand that 2 and 3 make 6, and then I just need to take away 1 from that, and I'll get what I wanted. That is, yeah, positive 6 minus 1 is 5. So that works. So now, if I'm looking at this and I say, all right, let me unsubstitute now, come back out of the thought bubble, and say 2 e to the x minus 1, or e to the x plus 3, all equals 0, that that is something then that splits into two parts. We say either 2 e to the x uh, minus 1 equals 0 or e to the x plus 3 equals 0. e to the x equals negative 3 doesn't work that way. There's no exponent that you can put on a positive number that will make it go negative. Negative exponents make fractions. Positive exponents make it bigger. This is not going to work. There's no solution over there. But here, e to the x equals half. That's something that we can solve. But again, not exactly sure what it is. Going to have to take the ln of both sides. Um, so that gets me that it is ln of 0.5, which is a decimal that we're not super interested in. Lastly, we have the most common use of this, and this is ACT, AP kind of stuff here, these sort of questions, where they've got x as an exponent that you're trying to solve. And the only trick, most of the time in math, I prefer to give you problems that you could approach a number of different ways, but this one has only one solution. The only thing that you're going to be able to do with this is to take the log, because when x is in the exponent, you don't have a lot of choice. So if we take the uh, log of both sides, now we've got, first of all, we've got each of these cases is a log of something being multiplied. So one log multiplied is the same as two logs being added. One log uh, being multiplied is the same as two logs being added. And then a log with an exponent is the same as multiplying a log. So this doesn't change, but this x can come out front. This doesn't change but the x can come out front and now okay so that is I have gotten everything nice and spread out the s in sift and now I need to isolate everything with 
and x on the left. Let's pick the left. So x log 3 was already here, minus x log 7. Uh, log 5 was already over here, so we're subtracting log 2 over. I have successfully isolated my variable that I want, and now I'm going to factor it out. I've got log 3 minus log 7 equals log 5 minus log 2, and then I just take over that crazy little thing there and divide both sides by it. So that is a horrible decimal, but it is an exact answer about what x is equal to.